Hello, all my goblins and ghouls. Welcome to or back to my channel. My name is Annie and today I'm going to be giving you 10 fall book recommendations. So fall is my favorite season of the year, but unfortunately I just moved back to California and it doesn't exist here. It's really sad. I'm kind of mourning the loss of fall. It's also quite hot here. I actually went to the beach yesterday. So I'm doing everything I can to give myself a fall, sometimes spooky, cozy feeling and i thought that i would share with you guys 10 books that can help you get in the fall spirit so if you're a mood reader if you want to get into the fall vibes check it out i'm gonna be going over several different genres in this video so i have some classics recommendations one that's kind of like uh historical literary fiction i have some horror recommendations some ya like fantasy type stuff and then some like mystery thrillers so i'm gonna start with classics first up we have cramford by elizabeth braddon now cramford is a book i read for uni last year and i just fell in love with it it's like the feeling of fall in a book it reminds me of gilmore girls like a lot basically it's just this this novel about a town and these please stop it's a small little village in the 1800s sometime and there's all these like old women that live there it's a very female dominated town it's very slice of life there's not much plot but there are cranky kind of quirky old ladies that have really funny weird habits and it's just like a delight even though the story is very simple and there's not much going on in terms of plot the characters are super lovable and rich and well developed the women in this town have kind of like a philosophy of life that they live by that is super inspiring even though at first it might seem kind of silly i know that's vague but i'm gonna leave it there and the other classic i have is little woman if you've been watching my channel you know how much i love this book hence my crazy copy of it i really want to reread re this soon because i have a copy with all three all three of the books in the series in it and i've actually only ever read the first one which is little woman the other two are little men and joe's boys but if you don't know what little woman is it's a classic you might have seen the film that Greta Gerwig made. I don't like that film, unfortunately, but now is not the time to go into that. But if you liked the film, you'll definitely like this. Regardless of how I feel about that film, this book is incredible. I read this book over and over and over again growing up. My mom used to say books can be like your best friends. Like they're never gonna change. They're never gonna leave you. And you can always like just start start over and go back to them and they're there when you need them and this was a book like that for me ah oh, sorry to get kind of sappy on you but yeah when i was growing up i like i felt like these girls were my friends so this is a story about some little women they are four sisters growing up during the civil war i believe and when the book opens they're all pretty young i'd say like early teenage years we have the eldest meg who is very focused on her image and she's really sad because the family is struggling a bit financially their dad is away fighting in the war and their mom is just trying to do her best to make ends meet and meg is frustrated with this because she wants to be seen as like cool basically which fair enough then we have joe who is the protagonist of this novel and my favorite and also the one i think i'm most like at least i like to think it i think i actually am though she is a writer and she's very outgoing and i guess rebellious you could say but she's more so like forward thinking or like ahead of her time she's super smart this sounds like i'm complimenting myself now she's great and she just has this like zest for life that's super contagious then we have beth who is quiet and kind of shy and she's really really good at the piano then we have amy who is a very annoying kind of frivolous younger sister she like has an eye for detail and beauty she becomes really cool too although she was always my least favorite in the books like i just or in this book i just really didn't like her but i'm not a youngest sibling so maybe i just don't get it this book follows them from like the teenager ish age to maybe late 20s kind of like womanhood and it's so girl this novel is so girl it's so girlhood and it's 
beautiful. Their mother is a really central figure in their life and she shares her philosophy of life with them. It's a really beautiful novel about learning and growing and learning how to be kind. There's so many good lessons in it and it's a book that just makes me smile. It feels cozy and I guess that's why I'd relate it to fall. So definitely check out Little Woman if you haven't read it yet because it's a really really good classic. I think it's actually also quite easy to digest. So, Little Woman. Moving on to our one like historical literary fiction book. I have The Manning Tree Witches by A.K. Blakemore. This is a great book to read in fall, especially if you love witches, which like who doesn't? Our main character in this book is called Rebecca West. She is living in the small town of Manning Tree in England. It's like the puritanical England witch craze type of days. And there's like, the, you know, religious panic going on because of reports of witches around the country. So Rebecca West doesn't have a dad. She just lives with her mom and she apparently has like no prospects for getting a husband. She lives in this small town. Her life is just kind of like drudgery and then one day her mom is accused of being a witch and things just kind of spiral from there i thought this book was so good really really well written and a really interesting book the vibes in this book are insane like rebecca keeps starting to have these like creepy dreams about things happening there's like devil stuff and like crazy witchy things. I would say the book isn't like super crazy or like supernatural y but it's more just about kind of like the witch trials in England. But some some funny things do happen. The book also portrays a very complex mother-daughter relationship with Rebecca and her mom and the first couple pages especially just hooked me. The summary on Goodreads says it's Wolf Hall meets the favorite. So that's kind of fun. I've actually never read Wolf Hall or seen The Favorite. Isn't that that movie with Emma Stone? I'd like to see it. Anyway, I really liked it and I think it's a really great read for this season, especially if you're interested in witches because it is like historical fiction. I wouldn't say it's like completely fac factional or anything, but I know that the author did lots of research into witches and the witch trials in England when she wrote it. Next up, we have two horror books. The first one is The September House by Carissa Orlando. I love this book very, very much. This surprised me a lot honestly i just talked about this in my mid-year book freak out tag like a month ago when this will be out i won't talk as in depth about it here i guess but this is basically about this woman that's living in this house when she and her husband moved in it is like their dream house like she's so excited it has everything they want it's got lots of character it's charming it's beautiful they move in and weird things start to happen and they start to feel like their house is maybe haunted and then they're definitely sure uh, that their house is haunted at some point and the woman is just like oh this is fine like we can just stay here and her husband's like are you crazy and the wife is like no 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 it's, it's fine like seriously don't worry about it we'll just deal with it we'll just live with these things when the book opens the husband has recently left the house we don't know exactly why Although I for one assumed that it was because the house is haunted. <laughs> also, to make things worse, every year in September, the house just goes crazy for a month. Like it gets really bad. And every year since they've lived there, it's gotten worse and worse every September. But obviously this one's the worst one yet. And with her husband out of the house, this woman is having to deal with all of the stuff that goes wrong during September the worst ever been all by herself. Until her daughter calls asking where her father is and when our main character doesn't have an answer for her her daughter's like okay it's that's i'm coming i'm coming to the house and we're gonna look for him obviously this is the last thing our main character wants her daughter has never been to the house it's like kind of impossible to hide that the house is haunted and things go from there it's a very funny book quite gory and actually some really scary parts but i loved this book it's hilarious the audio is also amazing i read it on audiobook and i would highly recommend there's some deep themes in here and kind of like a bigger message to the whole plot that i really ended up enjoying i would potentially look up trigger warnings for this but be warned that it might spoil you so tricky but if you have something that you feel like you should look up if it's a trigger for that look it up Look it up. So that's the September house, highly recommend. Next up, this is honestly my ultimate Halloween book, Mayfly by CJ Lead. My favorite, my favorite book I've read this year. 
I'm obsessed with it. I wrote my dissertation on it. Also, just real quick, I'm so excited. Her second novel is coming out on October 15th. And on the day of, I'm gonna go to Barnes & Noble because there's an event there with her and Chuck Tingle who wrote Camp Damascus and Bury Your Gaze. I need to read them, haven't done it yet. But she's like having a talk with him and she's doing signings. So I'm gonna go get this signed and I'm gonna get a copy of her new book, American Rapture and get it signed. I'm, I'm actually, I'm so excited, but Mayfly. So this is about a girl named Maeve. She lives in LA and she works at Disneyland. She plays Elsa at Disneyland and her best friend Kate works there too and she plays Anna. But Maeve has like really <laughs> um, interesting hobbies and um, she's a serial killer. So yeah, she's got this like darkness inside her and she feels like no one on earth understands. Actually, there was one person that understood, but she's in a coma now. And that would be Maeve's grandmother, Tallulah, who Maeve previously lived with. She has some sort of disease that made her enter this coma like a bit before the book starts. It's really hard on Maeve. Maeve only really has two people in her life that she's close with, Kate, who she works with, and Tallulah, her grandmother. So obviously when Tallulah's in a coma, she's feeling really lost, especially because Tallulah is the only one that she feels like understands her and has the same sort of darkness in her. So Maeve begins to spiral and things are only made worse when Kate's brother Gideon moves to town and starts kind of like, I don't know. He's just, he's just, he's a little bit, he's interested in Maeve. He kind of stirs some things up. The reason I say this is perfect for Halloween is because it is. Maeve's favorite kind of music is like Halloween music and her favorite time of year is Halloween. And this book leads up to a finale that takes place on Halloween. Perfect, stunning, absolutely gorgeous. And also CJ Leeds sprinkles some like music recommendations in like she'll talk about what song Maeve is listening to and Maeve goes on little rants about these songs like Patrick Bateman from American Psycho lots of American Psycho inspo in this by the way you can listen to a playlist CJ Lead actually made on Spotify full of Maeve's favorite music I've been listening to that playlist since January when this came out like on and off and I played it the other day and it just made me feel like it was fall. Highly recommend. This is an extreme horror book. Check trigger warning. Literally my favorite book I've read this year. I'm obsessed with it. I apologize. It is getting a little bit dark, but I am living in the sunroom as you can see, and it gets really hot in here during the day. So this is the only time I could film. I'm sorry if the lighting's bad and if the camera quality is bad as a result. The next category I have is YA fantasy books. And first up we have Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. I love this book. I really wanna reread it. This book is about Elizabeth. There she is. You can kind of see her. She lives in this big library where there's lots of grimoires. These grimoires are like, if you think of the book in Harry Potter that Hagrid assigns to Harry in them, like the one that like, it's like a monster care book and it'll like chomp your finger off. You know that one? Like that's what these grimoires are like. So they kind of like, they come to life. Something happens at the beginning of this book that makes a very important grimoire be released and it's very dangerous. Elizabeth is blamed for it and as such she's sent out to go basically defeat it because it's kind of like a monster. She ends up teaming up with a sorcerer and his demon friend and it's just so good. It's not like low stakes, but it feels pretty low stakes. And it's more like the charming whimsical side rather than like super dark, scary book, but it's just so good. The characters are super, super lovable. It's just very cozy vibes, especially the whole library setting and just really charming. And I love those types of books in fall. So yeah, Sorcerer of Thorns. Next up, I wanna recommend The Legendborn Cycle by Tracy Dion. We have the first two books out currently, Legendborn and Bloodmarked. Be warned, this is an unfinished series. You'll be waiting for the third book and I'm not exactly sure when it's coming out yet. I need to look that up. This is so good. I would categorize this as a fall read because one, I love epic fantasy during fall and two it's a university setting and i feel like fall is the perfect time to read from that sort of thing this follows brie whose mother unfortunately just passed away she starts attending this like pre-college program at a university in north carolina so it's basically like you can go to uni without actually being in uni it's like a like you're i don't know 
I don't know. It's like you live there and you're getting ready for college, but you're not at college. So she is a black girl in the deep south and that comes with all sorts of things, right? And so she's dealing with this, she's dealing with the death of her mother, and she's obviously really struggling. On one of her first nights at the university, she sees a monster in the woods, and then she sees someone like defeat that monster with magic and she finds out that she's the only one that can see it. She goes on to discover a society at her school that is based on Arthurian legend. So we're talking about Arthur and like Gawain, the Green Knight, Gawain, 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 and Merlin and that, right? But she's not supposed to be in that group because she's black and everyone in the group has bloodlines that can be traced back to Arthur. And they're all supposed to be white. So people are a little annoyed that she's here. And then she figures out that there's some other stuff going on with her that's not just related to this. I don't know, was that giving too much away? Perhaps. I don't think so though. The last bit was vague. Oh my God, it's getting so dark. Hi, sorry about that. I had to move because the lighting was getting so bad, so now I'm in my sister's room. Grace, if you're watching this, sorry, but I'll put everything back the way I left it. Anyway, Legendborn. I just love this book so much. I think Brie might be one of my favorite YA characters I've ever read. I think that the way that Tracy Dion writes about grief is really accurate and Sorry, I've kind of lost my train of thought now. I kind of have, I apologize. I love this book, as you can tell from all the tabs. And the second book I really liked too. You should check it out if any of that sounded interesting to you. The final category I have is mysteries. First up is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. The, just the whole series of it. Some of my favorite books, maybe of all time, because I do keep rereading them. I need to get physical copies. I'm really sad I don't have any. Sorry if you can hear the TV in the background, by the way, my family are watching right outside the door. This is, it's not an ideal filming situation. I, I I'm sorry. A Girl Girl's Guide to Murder is about this girl named Pip and she is doing this project for her EPQ, I believe. So she's a student in secondary school in the UK and she decides that she wants to look into this cold case of an event that happened in her town. There was a student at her high school called Andy Bell and Andy went missing one night and then her boyfriend was basically accused of the crime and then ended up killing himself. There was evidence found in his car so everyone assumed it was him. Pippa doesn't think so. Pip thinks someone else did it and she decides to make it her mission to find out who. She enlists the help of Sal Singh's brother. Sal was Andy's boyfriend and they're sleuthing things out. Fair warning, this is YA but it's pretty dark. I'm a little surprised that it's YA. It's really good. It somehow feels cozy to me even though it gets quite dark. I don't think it's necessarily cozy but these books I find really comforting as a trilogy. They're all fantastic and if you've already read them check out some of Holly Jackson's other books. I especially like Five Survive. I love Holly Jackson and I think she writes really really great mystery thrillers. Next up we have Spells for Forgetting by Adrian Young. This is about a woman named Emery who left her cozy little town after her best friend died and her boyfriend was convicted for the murder. Or at least accused? Yes, he was accused. I don't think he ever went away but everyone thought he did it. And so she was like, okay, well, my whole life is ruined because the two people I was closest to, one of them is dead, the other one really betrayed me and killed the other one. So I, I, have, to, I have to go. But years pass, she comes back to the island to run the family's mystical tea business. The fall vibes in this are insane, like chef's kiss. Everyone says that the island has its own sort of magic. It's a very, very special place and it's like a small town, like fall Gilmore Girls quirky place. It's, it's lovely, right? But the island, some things are starting to seem off. And then Emery runs back into August, the guy, you know, her ex that was accused of murdering her best friend and things start to go down. It's 
a really good novel i really enjoyed it the whole way through and it stuck with me i think i read it during the fall time last year and it was just super atmospheric the writing was great the plot was twisty and i couldn't see where anything was going so i would highly recommend i would say it's kind of like a mystery thriller kind of cozy though last but definitely not least the veronica's people series i have the first five here i read the first four i need to get to this one soon i need to read it this season especially look at the cover like isn't that just kind of very oh <laughs> spooky anyway i've talked about them over and over and over and over again on this channel and it's for good reason they are incredible. These books are good to read any time of year, but I think fall is probably the best time to read them. This is the first one, A Curious Beginning. These books are set in Victorian England. They follow Veronica. She is a lepidopterist, which means that she is like a butterfly hunter, but more of like a butterfly scientist. So she like captures them and then will like study them basically. And she knows a lot about butterflies it's her passion the first book starts when her aunt dies leaving her alone in the world she was basically an orphan taken in by these two women that she called her aunts now that her last aunt has died she has no ties to england and is about to set off on a butterfly expedition somewhere somewhere else like brazil or something but when she gets back to her house after the funeral it looks like someone's broken in she finds this intruder and they try to kidnap her she's rescued by a german baron he takes her away to london he's like veronica babe you're in danger come with me and she's like i don't really think i'm in danger like i'm not really anyone special but okay i was gonna go to london to get passage elsewhere anyway so yeah i'll like hitch a ride with you they get to london and the baron leaves her in the care of this guy stoker for the night and he is the baron's friend who's a taxidermist a natural historian a jack of all trades if you will and he's giving sexy pirate uh, I like Stoker a lot. So Veronica's like, wow, a man, lovely. I'll stay here for the night, that's fine. The next day, the Baron turns up dead and Stoker gets blamed for it. So Veronica and Stoker set out to prove Stoker's innocence and also to find out more about why people might be targeting Veronica, why she might be in danger, all the things that the Baron was talking about before he was killed and it just sets you off on this beautiful journey each book has a different mystery but i would kind of say the mysteries are not really the point of this series as good as they are like i think especially i just read book four it's the best one in my opinion it's set at this like gothic castle and i think the mystery in this one was actually really well done and it's not that the mysteries in the other ones aren't but it's just like the point more so is like this slow burn romance between Veronica and Stoker and just all the characters. The side characters in these novels are amazing. Like there's no character that feels incomplete. They all have motives. They all feel like real people and they're all really quirky and fun. And that's why I love this series so much. It's funny. It's heartwarming. It's a little bit ridiculous sometimes and it's just a lot of fun so i would highly recommend starting it in fall or just if you're reading it keep going babe read the next book now is the perfect time to do so those are all my fall book recommendations let me know down below if you have any books that you tend to return to in fall or you've read any of the books that i recommended let me know if you want me to read anything if you have any videos you'd like to see from me give this video a like if you liked it consider subscribing if you want to see more videos from me also if you've watched to this point leave the witch emoji for spookiness and the mining tree witches and i will see you in my next video bye